Hey guys, welcome to the latest episode of this unbelievable life. I have the amazing officer Taylor Maris with us today. She is the Evansville Police Department's special projects coordinator. So I've asked her on today to kind of talk about what her role with EPD is, and then also fill us in on cops connecting with kids. Taylor, take it away. Yeah, so um, first, thanks for having me um, and letting me represent the Evansville Police Department and cops connecting with kids. Um, I joined the police department in 2015 and worked patrol as everybody starts out. Um, and then two years ago, I began the position of special projects coordinator, which was a fairly new role. Um, now assistant chief Phil Smith, uh, he was injured when he first came on the department and they saw in him that, you know, he's a, a very good communicator. He's very good in the community. And um, they kind of reintroduced this role, which we previously had had it, which not people, not many people realize. Um, but they said he needs to be out in the community, not out there making arrests or making traffic stops. So he kind of restarted this position. And once he became assistant chief a couple of years ago, um, he asked me if I would like to fill in for him. So in doing so, as a special projects coordinator, um, I am part of the public information office. So we share um, everything on social media that typically comes from either myself or my sergeant, Anna Gray. Um, we do press releases. We share body cam footage, redact it for the media. We also help with um, like nationwide. A lot of the shows that you see on TV that we have almost 10 different TV shows like body cam murder tapes that Evansville is a part of. And so that funnels through our office, collecting all that body cam footage and sending it off to these national uh, companies to broadcast us. Um, we also spend a lot of our time in the community, which is where Cops Connecting with Kids comes into play. Um, I, this We just went this past um, last week of January and it was my third time going. And uh, my sergeant's been more than I have, but people like Phil Smith, Jason Cullen, they have been there from day one. And they are the people who really are the bulk of what makes Cops Connecting with Kids, Cops Connecting with Kids. Um, it all started back in 2014. The EVSC actually was taking a group of kids and they didn't have enough male chaperones. And so they asked the police department if they could provide any and in doing so, um, Phil was there, I think Jason was there, and maybe one other person, it might might have been Chief Bolin. But uh, while they were there, they said, I think we can do this. I think a police department can do this. And so they came back and started a plan and created Cops Connecting with Kids and kind of took that over from EVSC. And now we have taken almost 500 students since 2015 to Disney World. And a lot of people, you know, say, how is a police officer able to do that? Who pays for it? Um, how, how much, you know, time does a police officer get off to do that? And those are very valid questions. But at the same time, not, people don't get to experience what us as chaperones get to experience. Um, there really is a connection that's made there. And unless you're immersed in it, you don't see it. So I understand those outside questions. Um, but we've also seen, you know, students that have, for example, right now, my office has an intern. He was one of the, he came, he went to Disney in 2017 and he is uh, a senior at Harrison now, and he wants to be a police officer. So he is interning in our office. So just seeing that change, you know, had it not been for that trip, that might never have been, you know, an idea of his. So creating, those memories and bonds and relationships with those kids are really what it's about. Uh, but going back to how it's funded, it's all funded through fundraisers that we put on throughout the year and also community sponsors and donors. So the kids, the schools don't pay for anything. Um, whenever the police officers are down there, because we also have chaperones from the fire department, Vanderbilt County Sheriff's office, and obviously EVSC, um, we are just responsible for paying for our own food. Uh, as a chaperone, our flights taken care of, our park tickets taken care of, and our stays taken care of. So, um, and really a lot of people say, hey, well, are, are there not police officers working the street that week or what? We have a crime prevention unit here in Evansville um, who they also do a lot in the community. They aren't typically responding to runs every day. 
they handle neighborhood complaints. Um, they go out and investigate, you know, if there's a rash of thefts in a certain area, they go investigate that. So they aren't part of man, like manpower on patrol. So that's typically the bulk of the people that are chaperones that go with us from the police department. Um, but we had a great experience. So many kids got to experience new things. And for example, my first trip, when I went a couple years back, I still talk to those girls once a month. Um, Kalia was one of my first girls and she just recently broke her ankle. She's like, I don't know what to do. I'm scared. And, you know, just still having that connection, it means so much. Um, and being able to be a part of cops connecting with kids, cops connecting with kids is just so valuable to Evansville. And I think a lot of people see that. I totally think that that is so amazing. The other thing that I love about you guys is that you usually don't ever hesitate to jump in and help at community events. I know that my first exposure um, with you guys was through my Talks and Heroes events, and you guys would always send somebody out. And the reason I wanted to do that was, you know, at the time, um, there was something that happened on, on the at a national level. It was a, an altercation between someone with special needs and a police officer. And I wanted our kids and our families to feel comfortable around police and that our individuals with special needs would know that that's a safe person. And I think that's true yeah. of all kids that we want them to feel safe around police, fire. There should never be a fear. It should be that they're going to be someone that's going to help you. Yeah, I 100% agree. And that's one of the great things about my position. I get a lot of people that reach out to me saying, hey, can we have a police officer at this event? or at this trunk retreat, or I'm hosting this, can they come? And any time that we are able to be an ambassador for the police department and be a friendly face, why wouldn't we do it? Um, we are a very transparent agency. We really strive on, you know, showing everything. You know, we provide body cam footage when we aren't asked. We, we, put our information out there before other people can put information about us out there that, you know, might not be true. Uh, but going back to being in the community, we, uh, last year about this time, I started working with Optimal Rhythms in Newburgh, who does a lot with nonverbal speaking students, uh, specifically people with autism. And we realized there was a need uh, for, it's called the Keep Me Safe Registry now. Um, but it's, it's provided to families who have nonverbal, um, students or kids in their family, and they can put this sticker on the back of their vehicle. And anytime that, you know, that vehicle is involved in an accident or, um, anything where a first responder would need to get information about who's in the vehicle, um, you know, they can reach out to dispatch through this keep me safe registry and gather information just because they know that stickers on there. So we've realized there is a need to reach out to different populations on our department. And that's something that we are striving to do better at. Um, we've been to a lot of, like you said, uh, like we've been to a couple autism events in the past year, just because this uniform can be scary. And if kids don't know who we are inside the uniform, they probably wouldn't want to approach us. And that goes for kids in general. You know, they hear things or see things on TV. They see the uniform and associate it with what they've heard, whereas they may not have ever met an actual person that wears a uniform. So anytime that we have an opportunity to introduce ourselves as humans, not police officers, to people in our community, we soak it in. Any opportunity, we love, love to be there. Perfect. Well, I am so proud of you, and I am so proud of the things that our police department do. Um, I'm proud to, to live here. Um, we'll put it that way. Um, so thank you so much for being on today's show. I know we're going to have some follow-up questions, and we're definitely planning some follow-up podcasts, but thank you for the information you shared with us today. Thank you for sharing your absolutely unbelievable life, and appreciate everybody listening today. Thanks so much. Thanks, Nikki.